especially Harry, who we can see in this video shared by Nancy Sidley from the Sidley Twin Talk channel, desperately trying, trying to attract Meghan's attention. But she seems much, much interested in what Marcus Anderson has to say. He's sitting on the other side, even if we cannot see him. Perhaps she's uh, making sure to keep up to date with those um, special memberships at Soho House. After all, that's where she met Harry, or so we think. And those hand gestures that that index finger extended is enough proof that she wants to make sure that she only wants the best, the highest net worth possible. In this case, so no tricks, Marcus. So don't pitch me anyone with less than 500 million in the bank or else. And meanwhile, Harry is still trying to understand what net worth means. Harry, my friend, Google is your friend too. You can learn so many things searching on that tiny bar in the middle of the screen. And in a totally unrelated note, what looks like a giant tumbleweed was spotted running down the hills at Santa Barbara. But uh, to be fair, maybe it's not tumbleweed, but a giant ball made of failed hair implants that did not stick. And I know this is not a regular topic for the royal rogue, but such out-of-the-ordinary events need to be addressed because, well, look at that. How magnificent. Uh, what is not that mysterious is that some so-called body language experts have recently come forward with a claim that has turned heads and raised eyebrows around, across the globe. According to this self-proclaimed connoisseur of non-verbal cues, Harold is allegedly taken the reins of his marriage with Meghan. This declaration, seemingly plucked from the thickest hair of speculation, has sparked both amusement and bemusement in equal measure. The experts, which out of professional courtesy I will not mention, armed with an arsenal of zoom-in photographs, slow-motion video clips, and a dash of dramatic flair, assert that Harry's Every blink, nod, and subtle shift of weight is an undisputed sign of this newfound dominance in the relationship. Give me a break. And another expert chimes in, pointing to a photograph where Harry is keeping his chin up. This is our irrefutable proof, she declares, that Harry is now the pace setter of the relationship both literally and metaphorically, is a bold stride into marital leadership. Yeah, well, if you say so. And social media has erupted in a frenzy of reactions. Some netizens are rolling their eyes so hard they are at risk of spraining them. Others are uh, concocting their own theories, like the angle at which Megan holds her purse, being a subtle nod to her desire to adopt a third pet, or the way Harry scratches his ear, signaling his hidden aspirations to become a professional DJ. Only one thing is crystal clear. You have to make sure that whoever body language expert you pay attention to, make sure to check that it makes sense to you. As for Harry and Meghan, I think they haven't got the memo that Harry is the one leading the relationship. Maybe that memo got lost in the not-so-royal mail. And in a stunning turn of events, Tyler Perry has managed to achieve something that Meghan Markle could only dream of when it comes to collaborating with Netflix. While Del Taco Duchess may have had her fair share of struggles in her partnership with the streaming giant, Tyler Perry has effortlessly waltzed into the spotlight, proving that he knows exactly how to make Netflix work for him. And first and foremost, let's talk about the sheer magnitude of Perry's deal with Netflix. Eight movies over four years. That's the cinematic equivalent of hitting the jackpot at a Las Vegas casino. While Megan may have uh, ambitions of uh, producing thought-provoking documentaries and heartwarming family content, Perry is going all out with this streaming giant putting Megan's efforts to shame. And now, I'm going to insert this um, seemingly unrelated picture here. 
in which you can see Megan with both Kelly Rowland and Carrie Washington at a Beyoncé concert. Remember this picture? Yes? Well, you're about to understand why it's important. Because uh, Tyler Perry's upcoming movies, Six Triple Eight and Mea Culpa, shows how he is keeping Netflix on his side. Six Triple Eight delves into a historical, true story-based drama featuring an all-star cast that would make any Z-lister jellos, including Carrie Washington and Oprah. How about that? Megan, take notes. This is how you assemble a dream team. Although, wait a minute. I don't understand. Being you so talented, why weren't you invited to this? And let's not forget Mea Culpa, a gripping crime story with a murder case so thrilling it could put any courtroom drama to shame. Kelly Rowland, Trevant Rhodes, and a bunch of other talented actors are on board. It's almost as if Perry has unlocked this secret to attracting top-tier talent and still keeping his so-called friend Meghan Markle out of the fold. And this one I don't understand. Because Meghan was the star of Suits. Well, to be fair, maybe the courtroom was not the uh, focus of the show, but still, I'm sure that Megan's experience should have landed her at, at least a cameo on Tyler Perry's productions. But no. And you know what's even more ironic? That for all that Megan is the queen of ring bench and herself, the most impressive aspect of Perry's Netflix conquest is his ability to pivot away from comedy. Unlike Megan, who seemed determined to stick to a certain niche, Perry is spreading his creative wings. It's as if he's saying, hey, Netflix, I can do it all from historical dramas to intense crime thrillers. And Megan, on the other hand, seems stuck in a never-ending cycle of attempting to address social issues which didn't quite land as successfully as she might have hoped. And if you think you, you needed experience to be a producer, um, that maybe Tyler Perry was, has earned his Netflix crown due to his past experience. I just need to remind you about three famous producers who nail it big almost on their first try. First, Sonda Rhimes is best known for her work as a writer and showrunner. Her first major TV series, Grey's Anatomy, Mark her success as a producer without previous show running experience. Rhymes had a background in screenwriting and had worked on various TV shows uh, and projects before creating the show. And David Benioff and D.B. Wise, co creators of A Game of Thrones, had backgrounds as screen screenwriters and novelists before taking on the role of producers for the hit HBO series. Their storytelling skills were instrumental in adapting George R. R. Martin's books for television. And you know, it was uh, really hard, but just better not mention that final season. And Vince Gilligan, best known for creating two of my favorite shows of all time, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, had a background as a writer for TV series like The X-Files before achieving success as a producer. In fact, Breaking Bad marked his first major role as a showrunner. So we have enough examples of show producers who hit it big with their first shows. So there's no reason that Megan cannot have the same opportunity, right? But one thing that all the previous examples have in common is that they prove to me uh, outstanding storytellers and what's more, a lot of experience writing fiction, which you're not going to tell me that Megan doesn't have more than enough experience with fiction. I think she's overqualified in that regard. So maybe her big break can come at any moment. And meanwhile, Harry has and his legal squad are gearing up to pen a charming letter to the ministers, essentially asking, pretty please, can we use those top secret leaves on inquiry documents in our tiff with the Daily Mail? Because the high courts heard this latest twist in the saga where Harry, along with other celebrities, is suing the publisher for allegedly playing fast and loose with their private info. Now, these documents are like 
The holy grail of gossip originally handed over with the promise of mum's word, but Harry's team, they have proven to be as nagging as the wife, uh, believe these papers are just the ticket to strengthen their case. Mr. Justice Nicklin, acting as the referee in this legal match, previously said, no, you can't use that info, deeming it a breach of a restriction order. And the Daily Mail, on the other hand, is wagging its finger at Harry's lawyers, accusing them of being both tactical and cynical. They're clinging to those documents like they're the last lifeboat on the Titanic, rejecting any notion of handing them over voluntarily. The lane tactic? Us never, says the Daily Mail as they polish the halo. And David Sherborne, barrister for the celeb squad, is scratching his head, wondering why the Daily Mail wouldn't want to share these oh-so-relevant papers, especially since they've been shouting from the rooftops that they've got nothing to hide. And meanwhile, ANL is standing firm, like a stubborn child with a cookie refusing to share. And as for the hearing, it wrapped up with their talks of legal costs and the possibility of another round in March. Harry's not alone in this legal telenovela. He's joined by Elton John and Doreen Lawrence, who dropped by to catch some of that courtroom drama. So when you think about it, Megan's got already a, a gritty courtroom drama based on real life events in her own home. And what's more, The Leaves on Papers is a really catchy name for a film or a novel. But nah, that would take more than one hour a week of work.